little bit after seven. Three degrees, I think that's about 38 Fahrenheit. So a beautiful June morning, hey? Let's take a boo up front and see what the progress is. It's been uh, almost exactly one month since I did uh, the first garden or first food forest update. So I had a chance to get in here and I got a bunch of the dandelions out, which was nice. I still obviously should sweep some of this stuff off. I obviously have some canes that I could have cut back. We got some strawberries flowering on both sides. That looks nice. So I still have to clean this up. I still have tons to do. The lavender that I was hoping was going to come back has not anywhere in any of the places. So, but I popped in uh, some lemon balm and I'll put something else on the back of the has caps here as soon as I figure out what I like. Oh, hey, speaking of has caps, they're one of the first ones to flower. And those are little has caps coming on. Honey berries, they're also called. We got the lovely weed lamb's quarter. This is basically like a spinach. You eat it the exact same way. It can go in salads, you can cook it. Um, so whatever, I'll harvest that and chuck it in the salad. And again, like I say, please forgive me. I do have, uh, you know, still quite a bit of stuff that I've got to pick away at out here. I've got most of the weeding done, but certainly not all of it. Um, I don't know. I've been real crazy busy out at the farm, so I haven't done a whole heck of a lot of videoing. Um, both apple trees blossomed this year. Woohoo hoo Because that's the first time that one has ever blossomed. Uh, the cherry trees were absolutely packed, and they're done now, so they should all be setting fruit. The very first are actually the, uh, uh, what are those, apricots? And uh, so those are all done, but certain things are starting to starting to come into flower here. That's a, what, a bronze bugle, I think. Yep. So that came back no problem. I've got some volunteer sunflowers popping up here and there. And I think that that is a chamomile popping back from, from last year. So this is these, anyway. I don't know about that fella. But these are, uh, was it skullcap? So those are fantastic for, uh, for teas, for headaches. And I had one plant here. So this is what's happened from just sort of self-seeding. So I'm excited about that. I had some stuff come back. This is a, just a little marigold that I... Whatever, I had some seeds, so I popped them in. Oh, I might have another couple of chamomile coming on here, too. Well, 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 what do you know? And more uh, more skull caps. So that's going to be awesome. I still got to do a bit of weeding. Again, you're going to see, like, sunflowers just popping up here and there. Awesome. You can stay. Here's the funny thing. See the mountain orc? Purple spinach? Obviously, you can. Um, that was only planted out back. Like, I, I've never had that out front. I didn't bring seeds out here. I have no idea how this one little area here got them, but they're gonna stay. In fact, I'm gonna bring a bunch more out. The chives are just looking, just banging. Every tree's got a big clump around it like this. The comfrey is, uh, it's just about getting ready to flower, which means I will be, I will be cutting this down to the ground and using this as a fertilizer. Apparently, right before the flowers open is the highest concentration of nutrients. Um, this is the bee balm, and it's uh, it is doing very, very well this year. This was just a, a tiny little plant, didn't grow, must have been just kind of setting roots last year. So hopefully it flowers this year. I think it's supposed to get four or five feet tall. And my lupins are doing extremely well, extremely well all over the yard, and I mean all over like I probably have oh I don't know 50 100 lupins so there's one there's one there's one there's another one oh wait another one another one another one another one another one and that's just this area all right there's one there there's another one there there's another one there oh what are those yeah more so I'm thinking uh, I'm probably gonna repot some of those up and uh, see if we can sell them um all the extra peppers that i had i had like i don't know maybe it was 20 20 or something like that uh, california wonders so i popped them out into the uh, little cheaply made raised uh, raised boxes and <clears throat> looks like we have some uh some uh, currants coming on red currants looking good oh forgot about you 
this little area here, I, I don't like it. I planted um, like a hundred different bulbs. They were supposed to come up, you know, sort of, you know, some early, some late. There was a couple little flowers in there. It gets overrun with weeds all the time. So we tore out an old fence at the farm and I'm gonna cut those old fence boards and basically make a little raised box area, a little rustic looking, and I'm gonna dig all of that out. I'm gonna throw some landscape fabric down there, maybe double it up on the side where the invasive grass always comes in and uh, get that looking a little purtier. I'll get right on that the second I have some time. I uh, popped out some of my nasturtiums that I had. I'm very curious if the Russian almond will produce an almond this year. We shall see. We had one the first year. We didn't have anything last year. And I did a little pruning on these, so it is looking a little bit healthier. And the yarrow. The yarrow is just awesome. It's just getting ready to flower. Um, a little disappointed in uh, my daffodils. I was chatting with uh, me buddy there, Mr. William Coleman, and he is a uh, very astute when it comes to flower growing. And uh, he definitely explained what I was doing wrong with them. If you want them coming back year after year after year, you have to plant them deep so that they don't get too dry in the summer and they don't uh, they don't freeze too fast and get too cold in the winter. So. I recall when I put in the tulips and the crocuses and uh, the daffodils here, I, uh, I, I'm i next to positive. I only put them three or four inches uh, down. And I have been told that they should be anywhere between 8 and 12 if you want them coming back every year. So no big deal. You live and you learn. That is an Ella campaign. And hopefully that flowers this year. That's already bigger than it was last year. These are so velvety. Like... In a pinch, I'm pretty sure you could use that as uh, emergency wilderness toilet paper. Wow. Giddy up. Again, more lupins, 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 lupins. They're flipping everywhere. It's awesome. I love it. The, this apple tree, which one is this one? Honeycrisp. Finally set blossom. So I am... I am very, very hopeful that uh, that we will have some apples on this tree this year. So, very excited about that. Just as a little test run, I dug that sucker out. Now, keep in mind that these are uh, nitrogen-fixing dynamic accumulators, which tends to mean that they have a very, very long taproot. And that little plant's taproot had to been that long, and I broke some of it off. But I put that in there, oh, I don't know, four or five days ago. So, you can apparently transplant them fairly easy. And I have a few... So, my gooseberry that I cut back hard looks to be doing okay. It has not flowered yet. Oh, another random lupin. All these little, I don't know what they're called, chicks and peas. These are this bigger and better than at any point last year. So, these are really starting to spread out. I'm liking it. Another year or two, and hopefully this area in here will be... Uh, completely covered. These are the onions that didn't do much and uh, the snow came and I didn't get them out of the ground to pickle them so I just said whatever. We should have some nice allium blooms in here this uh, this summer and fall. Ah, like if you, oh my, here we go. We got some cherries coming on. Yep, yep. Giddy up. Look at how packed this tree is with, I wish I'd taken a quick vid or something. I mean you can tell, like this thing was, this, it was white. It was, it was awesome. Um, yeah, more peppers. I need, still need to get something in there. Besides the weeds. Uh, hollyhock. I had two planted. I had a hollyhock normal and a hollyhock black. And that would be the black hollyhock. The normal one was, uh, the normal one was actually bigger than this last year. And it did not come back. <coughs> So we shall see, but I think those seeds are fairly easy to save. So I will have hollyhocks one of these years. Uh, my buckets from last year, my potato buckets, I haven't done. I haven't done anything with, so they are just volunteering some lamb's quarter and other weeds right now, but I will take care of that shortly. Uh, extra broccoli, a bunch of extra tomatoes, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of extra tomatoes. You know me, I never go overboard on anything, okay? so... Yeah, just trying to get everything planted out. I've got calendula seeds and lavender seeds from Nick's allotment diary that will be that will be getting popped uh, popped in 
very, very soon. Oh, check out this fail. <laughs> so for my UK buddies, and anybody that's, that is, uh, you know, decent at taking cuttings, um, I took cuttings from uh, when I pruned all the different uh, fruiting shrubs. So like red currant, what do we got here? Oh, cranberry. So, you know, whatever, I took my little cutting like I've seen everyone do. I scraped, uh, uh, I scraped some of the, uh, you know, the bark off down to the cambium layer. Um, some of them I used a rooting hormone. Some of them used uh, blackstrap molasses and plunked them in a little pot like I see everybody do. And I've only got, I think I have one cranberry that has a little green on it. And I have two currants. And that is essentially it. So if uh, you know, Mike or Woody or William, anybody that uh, you know is pretty is decent at uh, taking the cuttings, I would uh, I'd love a lesson. Uh, those irises that I uh, dug up from the back last year, that was one clump, and I divided them out into whatever that is, ten or twelve there. So we should have a nice little display going on. Here's the Queen Queen Anne's lace. I'm looking forward to trying those flowers in uh, in a tea. I was doing some reading on them, and they uh, they look great. Oh, the, one of my only echinaceas to survive and come back. So again, pretty stoked about that. Be my first cone flower in the yard. And this oh ho 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 ho! We got apples coming on. Oh, so exciting! These guys, these uh, are these sea buckthorn. Yeah, they're both doing very, very well. Oh, something else I was excited about. I'll show you real quick. See, I, who was asking me? I think it was Trollforge was asking me. You know, oh, you have dill that uh, self-seeds? I, well, I think it all does. I I let it go to seed. I let it dry. At the very end of the year, I'll pull them out of the ground, shake them around, and I haven't actually planted dill. I can't even remember how many years how many years but okay check this out I had to put this here because I kept stepping on it so this is my goji berry from out back last year and it was uh, doing poorly it did not have anywhere near enough Sun so I said okay well whatever we'll rip it up bring it up here and I was just hoping that it had time to establish its roots and obviously it did so I hacked it back hard I mean like very hard so hopefully in a couple of years here we've got some of those uh, delicious orange berries uh, there's my elderberry, or one of my three. So, yeah, a bunch of stuff is, well, I mean, really, more, another elderberry. Most things are looking absolutely fantastic. So, this tree's got a really weird shape, but, I don't know. It's so green, it just, it, uh, I love it. There was one fruit on there last year, and it was delicious. This still needs some work in here. I've been popping little things in, but... Oh, whatever, there's tons of time, hey? So, I planted this bed out, super, super disappointed. Those were spring onions, those were some carrots. I think I did beets in here, and... I don't know what I did over there. Kale. And uh, I think, just with me spending so much time out at the farm, it just got way too dry for them to germinate properly. So... Don't know. It seems like a waste of space to just have, you know, that few things in there so maybe I'll whatever I'll think about reseeding I should do this and I should do that and then I get busy and I end up shooting all over myself so you know how that goes oh look at these babies those are awesome that lid's been like that which means that gets next to no rain that is one of the most drought tolerant plants I've ever seen very 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 long tap root um, like I, I might have watered this bed twice this year maybe Maybe. There's the cut and come again. There really hasn't been cut much. We've had a couple good salads out of there. Not 100% sure why we're not using it more, but whatever. Maybe I'll cut a bunch, put it in a bag, and take it out to the farm. Shane and I will crush that in no time. Here's some of my uh, potato pots that I, uh, I started in the garage. Uh, each pot, I believe, has got like eight or nine tiny. Like uh, just the little tiddlers. And uh, they came up. Not only did they come up fast, and I planted them like way down in the bottom, but man, they're looking strong. And I promised myself this year that I will lose my potatoes to having them rot away in a wet pot. 
before I'll have scabby potatoes because I didn't water them enough. So that is my commitment to me. Uh, I believe I had two of my sweet grass just not come back. So you're a keeper, bud. You're a keeper. That can be divided up hundreds of hundreds of times. What else do I have here that of any interest? Well, none of this really. Um, this is, come on, help me out, ladies' mantle. And it is 12 times bigger than last year. It looks like it's just about to start flowering. This is apparently an absolutely wonderful tea for most female uh, maladies. So I'm uh, looking very forward to harvesting this and drying it out. Uh, that was that honey suckle hellberry thing. I didn't, I don't know, I didn't want to give it away didn't know anybody to give it away to. It wasn't that I didn't want to give it away. So that's doing quite well. Siberian ginseng. You know, I was going to be extremely disappointed if that didn't come back. I'm like, you're fine with Siberia, but Alberta, <laughs> just a bit too cold. Like, give me a break. Ah, more bee balm. Yeah, it's just coming along. Like, oh yeah, something about this apricot tree that I was going to ask. Has anybody out there ever tried air pruning? So it's just a method of propagating where you would take and cut cut the bark off down to the cambium layer and all the way around put some soil on there and some rooting compound compound whatever it is and uh, put a bag on it and after five or six weeks you take the bag off cut it here and that is full of roots so I'm looking forward to possibly having another two apricot trees um, I'm gonna give it a try because I don't think that these are really helping the helping the tree out a whole heck of a lot um, but I don't want to just cut them off because I mean hey in a couple years again that could be that could be a, a full-blown apricot tree Manchurian strain well, I haven't had any fruit off that yet but whatever we'll keep trying we'll keep trying my name is here. uh what are those lilies yeah Asiatic lilies, volunteer lettuce from last year. What else did I pop in here? I'm pretty sure I popped in some bloody dock. Yeah, I grew that from seed this year. So that should fill in that area. I want to get some rhubarb or something for over here. And I tore out my uh, Saskatoons, the superfood, according to Adam. They're super tasty. I don't understand the folks that were thinking that they're they're invasive and they're hard to handle. I mean. Prune your bush, man. It's not that big a deal. 